Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to build a Raspberry Pi Pico DVI sock. I know, a sock. Um, so um, this is a board that can actually do DVI out there. It's called a sock because it's like a hat, but it's smaller and on the bottom. So um, this is the um, uh, GitHub repo, um, which describes that. And you can see how um, the sock attaches to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi Pico board. The thing I like about this is, uh, this is the circuit diagram, is it's, it is also kind of really simple. It only uses eight uh, IOs from the Pico and then simply like 270 ohm resistors on each one. And the problem with it is uh, it's actually quite hard to make. Um, it's, it's very fine, uses very fine pitch components. Those resistors are tiny um, and you need to be kind of doing surface mount soldering. So. Um, to do this, I thought, okay, um, I'm going to see if I can use a stencil to apply solder paste, and then maybe I can um, uh, kind of do hot air soldering uh, to make that work. Uh, so this is my first time using solder paste with a stencil. I've used solder paste in the past. There's a video I'll put up here about that, but this is the first time using a stencil. And actually, it's it, it was uh, it's kind of really interesting, and I kind of learned a lot in doing this. So. Um, Osh Park provided the stencil and they provided these little kind of clamps to put it in as well. Um, and I had to experiment a fair bit to figure out what the right amount of solder paste was. Um, and what I discovered in kind of doing this lots of times and then kind of cleaning off solder paste and trying again um, was that if you go back and forward with the paste, uh, you, you tend to end up with just that kind of too much paste on the board because the stencil flexes on the top of the board. Um, so uh, you can see me kind of figuring this out as I go. I actually did three um, separate boards and what I discovered was the best approach was you need to have the right amount of paste actually on the stencil and then it's a single motion across the board and if you can get to a point where you're actually able to see the gaps between the pads then you've done it right. If you can't see the gaps between the pads then things are wrong. And I managed to get it right kind of once out of these three boards and the one that's the, the board that I think is in a good shape is the one on the far um, right of this picture. Um, so that's the one I decided to like place the components on. Um, so you can see now I'm beginning to put these tiny 405 re uh, resistors on the board. Uh, be careful not to get solder paste on your tweezers in this because then the uh, resistor sticks to the tweezers rather than the board. Uh, so keep your tweezers nice and clean throughout this. And I also found that like getting Getting good at kind of dropping uh, the resistor right over the pad uh, and not touching the pad was, uh, it's definitely a, a skill that you, you can learn. Um, the DVI connector or the HDMI connector uh, was actually uh, pretty easy. It, line, it lines up pretty well. Um, and this is the board kind of ready to be uh, soldered. So I decided to use my um, uh, IR preheating plate, which I actually haven't had for very long. And typically I'm using this for uh, things like um, heating up a, a kind of a board that has a really big ground plane in it. And when it has a big ground plane, when you solder it, the heat just goes into the ground plane and you actually can't get the component you're heating up to, um, to actually kind of, uh, the solder doesn't melt. So the idea of this is that it heats it, it heats up the board. So the whole board is like at 100 or 150 degrees and then it becomes easier. Now here's the, the solder profile for the solder paste I was using. And what I thought I could do is I could use this um, heating plate to get the, to go through the kind of soak temperature. And then I thought I would use my hot air rework station just to push it over the top and then kind of finally solder the components. So I can do that kind of slow ramp with the IR heating plate. And um, it worked, I mean, really well. I've never done this before. This is the first time for using an IR heating plate. You can see the Pico, um, DVI sock on the on the uh, board there and I'm kind of looking at it a few times just to see if the, the paste has uh, turned to solder and uh, I got it up to about 180 degrees still wasn't solder so it still hadn't turned to solder but this is the final result I used my um, hot air rework um, um, station to just do the final stages but you can see here um, everything lines up really well the fillets on these the, these solder joints are just perfect I haven't, I haven't retouched this at all. This was actually just after heating it and then using the hot air rework station. You can see the DVI connector is just perfect as well, perfectly aligned. 
So this is it actually working. So again, first time, just amazed at how, how well this worked. Um, so this is one of the demos from uh, the DVI SOC project. You can see Eben Upton's head. Uh, this is the kind of Hello World Pico bit banging DVI, uh, 640 by 480, I think, resolution on this. It just scrolls past, pretty cool. Obviously, Mandelbrot set, and that's working really well. Um, a couple of other examples are, um, this is a, a kind of moon picture that's turned into like one bit graphics. Here's a text terminal, a color text terminal, loads of colors available. Um, there's a couple of demos I couldn't get to work. So um, I think it might be my, related to my monitor, um, but if I get those to work, then I'll, I'll post an update on it. But this, is, this has been really fun. Thanks for watching. Um, some extra bonus content at the end here. Uh, this is just me making another seven of these. Okay, quick update. Um, I actually managed to get all of the samples to work. Um, and the thing I was doing wrong is I was trying to actually plug it into the DVI connector on an older monitor. And if I just plug it into the HDMI inputs, um, everything worked fine. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.